Hey everyone, Haley here from The Foiled Plan. We are back with part two in this Cricut Design Space foiled stickers tutorial. So in part one, I showed you how I created these stickers in Cricut Design Space, and now we're actually going to do the foiling part. So if you missed part one, go back and watch that, and then let's get into part two. If you are already a foiled friend, thank you for joining me again today. And if you're new here, welcome. I share a lot of different content on my channel. Things like design videos, Cricut crafts, foiling, dollar store DIYs, epoxy tumblers, unboxings, and pretty much anything related to running a small creative business. So if that sort of content interests you, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button to become a foiled friend and turn the notification bell on so you never miss an uploaded video. Now that you know a little bit more about my channel, let's jump into today's video. If you're watching this video right after watching part one, then uh, perfect because this is where we left off. I'm just gonna hop over to the other room and turn my Explore Air 2 on so that it can detect it on the screen. So unfortunately, uh, Cricut Design Space just kind of crapped out when I went to print it. <laughs> so I lost everything. It's always a good idea. I always tell myself this. And then of course, the one time I'm trying to do a tutorial, I forget to do it. Um, usually when I'm working on something, especially something that has a lot of details with it or a lot of pieces to it, I will save the project before I hit make it just in case because I know it takes a lot for the program to like think about what is going on. Unfortunately, I did not do that with all of those hearts that I just did. So I am going to make some new ones really quick and let's try this again. <laughs> uh. Okay, so just for the sake of saving time, I don't want to spend any more time recording all of this. I just want to be able to show you the final result and the next steps. So I'm just going to do two hearts and we're going to move on. And um, I've already showed you how to maximize uh, and get the most out of your material by using the rectangle. But for now, I am just going to go ahead with printing these so that you can See the next step. We're gonna hit continue. And it's gonna try and connect to the machine now. Hopefully it works and hopefully this doesn't freeze up again. <laughs> uh, okay, it looks like it's connected. So we're now going to send it to the printer. And I am using my HP LaserJet Pro MFP M127FW. As I mentioned though before, it's uh, I'm like next to impossible to try and find that one. So just a monochromatic, monochromatic laser printer. Um, okay, now this one's totally up to you if you wanna add a bleed or not. I am going to just because I don't, if the blade is even just a little bit off, I don't want it to be uh, like a white line on the outside of like the edge anywhere. I want the foil to go right to the edge. So I'm going to add a bleed and I'm just going to hit print and it should be printing on the printer now. Uh, and then we will do the next steps. I am using the anti Tay sticker packs. Uh, she, they, she offers them in a uh, 10 sheet pack and just recently she came out with a 50, I believe it's 50 sheet pack. If you're interested in that sticker paper, I really like it. I kind of go back and forth. It depends on what I have in stock, but um, I really like her sticker paper because on the back of it too, if you're making like um, kiss cut stickers, so stickers that don't go all the way through, it's nice to have like nothing on the backing sheet, which is how her sticker paper is. Uh, if I'm not using that, I'm usually using like an Avery sticker paper. Uh, but the, the one thing that's like a pet peeve of mine with that is that you can see like the Avery logo and everything on the back of the sheet. So yeah, not not my favorite thing, but like the actual sticker paper is fine. But anyways, if you are interested in anti Tay sticker paper, then um, if you're not one of her members, you can use my code, which is just the foiled plan, 
all like no spaces and you can get 10% off. If you are a member of hers, then you get 20% off. But uh, yeah, there's lots of sticker papers out there. But if you choose to use hers, like I do, then make sure you don't miss out on getting 10% off. And when you use that code, I get a little bit of a kickback too. So thank you in advance. Uh, anyways, uh, when you are using anti tay sticker paper, you're not gonna use the sticker paper setting from Cricut, you're actually going to use copy paper. Or rather, that's what I use. Copy paper. And click done. Okay, load tools and material. Okay, so this should be good to go. Now I am going to head over to the other room and we will take the uh, sticker paper off of the printer and then get it set up with the Cricut. So let's go. So I didn't realize for that whole section I was filming, man, I feel like such an amateur. Um, I had my mic clipped to me, but it was not plugged in. Like the end of it was on the floor. I don't know. Anyways, sorry about the crappy audio there. Hopefully we'll get back on track. What a day. Uh, hopefully this audio is okay. Again, I'm sorry for that. Can you tell where I am from by the amount of times I apologize for things? Here's a new game. Every time I say sorry, take a shot of maple syrup. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so these stickers are massive, but that's fine. At least you can see them from that far away. What we're going to do first is cut them on the Cricut. The reason you cut before you foil is because the Cricut needs to read the registration marks to understand where it needs to cut. And then once it has cut around them, then I cut off these registration marks and then add foil and then we foil in the mink machine. So I'm going to open up my Cricut and I'm going to grab my light grip cutting mat. Now this mat has seen better days, so it's not overly sticky. I do need to clean it so that I can continue to use it. But hopefully it has enough stickiness to hold this sheet down. We shall see. Okay, just going to load it into the Cricut. Dog hair is always free here. <laughs> just make sure there's nothing on your sheet. We're gonna cut. While that is reading and deciding where it wants to cut, I'm going to pick out some foil. Okay, and as always, we flip the mat over and peel the mat away to avoid curling the paper. And this is what the sticker paper looks like. This is the pack that it comes in. This is the um, 10 sheet pack. And then, like I said before, there is the bigger one too. Um, and then on the back, there's nothing on it. So that's why I like this. Uh, well, that's not the only reason, <laughs> but that's one of the reasons I like it. So um, with foiling, we don't have to go all the same color. And I always have like a foil scraps bin and I was able to find some scraps that might work, which is exciting. So we can do a few different options. Uh, but first I'm going to cut this off. It's actually gonna be faster if I just use my paper trimmer, which I always have hanging out on the side of my desk. And you don't have to be like super precise or anything with this. So we were just focused on getting that, um, getting rid of the black registration marks.
All right, so I'm going to turn my mink machine on and then I'm going to um, turn it up to the number four. Hmm. Now today I am working with a transfer folder just because I have multiple different pieces of foil. This is a Heidi Swap transfer folder. I have these linked in my Amazon shop as well, if you are interested. So now we will feed it into the mink machine. All right, I will move you closer for the big reveal. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this sticker tutorial using Cricut Design Space, your Cricut Explore Air 2, and a mink machine. If you are interested in using this sticker paper from Auntie Tay, it's available on shopantitay.com. I do have a link in the description box below, and uh, my 10% off coupon code that I mentioned, you can use that for this, but you can also use it for all the other craft supplies that she has on her website. So take advantage of those, especially if you're in places like the States, because uh, things ship really quickly. If you are in Canada, like myself, there is um, oftentimes duties, so just be aware of that and uh, it can take a little bit of time to come in, but it's worth it once it does. If you are curious about uh, foiling, I do have a foiling playlist on my YouTube channel, so I'll be sure to link that up at the top here. I think it's probably gonna show up over here. I don't know, somewhere at the top here, I will link that playlist so that you can check out more foiling videos. Um, that kind of starts with the basics and like what foiling is, how to get started, and all that jazz. If you want to hang out with me in between videos, then uh, my social media is all linked down below. I am most active on Instagram. That is all I have for you guys today. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comments down below. Uh, I don't always get notifications for every single individual comment, but I usually try to go back through every now and then. So. I will try and help if I can. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys have a super awesome day. That is all I'm gonna say, bye.